Hey guys, I'm Lucas, welcome to KNews episode 37 about the upcoming Soyuz launch. Unlike the rocket suggests, this is not a launch for Russia and the rocket was bought by the European Space Agency. However, it is configured as usual with one core and four strap-on boosters. On top of the second stage is the Fregat upper stage, which is very similar to the Breeze upper stage of the Proton rocket. The biggest difference is the size of the tanks, because Fregat only carries 5 tons of fuel, while Breeze fits 20 in its tanks. The payload is mounted on top and is covered by a ST-type fairing. That type of fairing is relatively new and makes it possible to carry a bigger payload. This however requires a flight computer upgrade. In the past, because the old analog system was not able to handle the aerodynamic instability after second stage separation. In KSP we have basically such an analog system pressing buttons and it's not so easy to keep the rocket heading in the right direction after separation. The launch will occur at the Guiana Space Center in French Guiana, which is just north of Brazil, near the equator. This makes the site almost perfect to launch rockets, because you can directly aim for almost every inclination. Soyuz will lift off at 9 o'clock pm UTC, which is 6 o'clock in the evening local time. It will then head north for a sun-synchronous polar orbit, at a final inclination of 98 degrees and an altitude of almost 700 kilometers. This orbit is special because it allows the payload to be illuminated by the sun most of the time. Speaking of payload, the rocket carries multiple satellites, from which the biggest one is Sentinel-1B. It will join its younger brother Sentinel-1A at the same orbit, just on the opposite side. Both satellites are identical and do the same thing, which is taking radar images of the ground. Using two decreases the time it takes for the system to cover the whole surface, which is important for many applications. The radar images provide data about the surface elevation with a fairly high resolution down to 5 meters squared pixels. Although the elevation seems to be rather static, meaning not changing, it is in fact anything but that. Our planet's mantle and core are moving and partly consist of molten lava. This movement causes the crust to rise, fall and drift around, causing earthquakes once in a while for example. These earthquakes can then for example be predicted by carefully studying the data of Sentinel, hence the name which basically stands for guard or watchman. Now how does it work? Radar stands for radio detection and ranging and it basically shoots radio waves at the ground. These bounce back in such a fashion and as you can see the elevation of the ground can be calculated from the varying delay of the echo. However the signal which bounces back does of course not focus back to the satellite as you can imagine. But this only reduces the resolution which is quite unintuitive. You'd think these parts right here would just miss the satellite and it could only see a small part which is basically just as wide as its antenna. However thanks to radio waves being waves, this animation is not what happens in reality. It looks far more complex because at every point the radio signal hits the ground it creates a new wave which travels back to the satellite in a circular or spherical fashion. This means information about every single point the signal hits is collected by the satellite's antenna and that is showcased here by all the circles passing through the antenna at some point. Now increasing the antenna size still has an important benefit. It increases the so called signal to noise ratio. Noise is always present sadly and the more of the echo you collect the better you can reduce it to obtain more and more information about the ground. There is yet another trick they use which I want to talk about quickly. Instead of having an enormous antenna, they bombard the ground with many radio pulses on the same spot. The satellite does not stand still of course and travels with many kilometers per second around the planet. This movement combined with all these pulses and of course a lot of math can be used to virtually increase the antenna size since the satellite receives information about the same ground multiple times as if the antenna was longer and lead to accuracies such a small antenna would never be able to achieve on its own. This process is called synthetic aperture radar and is pretty common in space exploration but is also used by spy planes to get extremely detailed maps of the ground. Ok, enough of that. Next to Sentinel there is a smaller satellite called Microscope which is an acronym of course and stands for Microsatellite à traîner compensé pour l'observation du principe d'équivalence. It basically stands for observation and study of the equivalence principle, which states that gravity acts the same on objects no matter what material they are made of. This can of course be shown by simply throwing two different rocks down a building, but some people just want to know it more precise and try to find errors on the 15th decimal place. 
two cylinders made out of different materials will be held in precisely the same orbit by being placed next to each other. Since they move through the same gravitational field around our planet, all disturbances must result in the same behavior. Any deviation would mean the equivalence principle is not correct and our physics as we know it would need an overhaul. Last but not least there are three CubeSats from different universities weighing roughly one kilogram each. There are many CubeSats built by students all around the world and only a few will ever get to space so I think it's a big honor and congratulations to all involved. Once in orbit, the Fregat upper stage will release Sentinel and it will then showcase its potential with 5 engine birds in total. The next one decreases the periapsis down to 450 and the apoapsis to 665 km to then release the CubeSats. Next up are two more burns to again reach a circular orbit of 711 km where Microscope gets released. The fifth and last burn will end the mission and make the upper stage re-enter to the atmosphere again. Okay, that was KNews episode 37 about Soyuz and I hope to see you in the next one if you like. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.